First of all, I should explain my grandfather's role in the bombings. He was the only man in the world to fly on both planes that dropped the atomic bomb on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. He was the only man in the world to fly on both planes. The atomic bomb was unlike any bomb at the time. It didn't detonate on impact. It had to detonate in the middle of the air to cause the maximum amount of destruction. To have a bomb detonate in the middle of the air was new back then. So they had to figure out how to make sure that the plane was far enough away from the bomb before it went off. And that was my grandfather's job. He was part of that project. My grandfather died when I was four. He believed what he did was right, but he also believed in a world without nuclear weapons. He wasn't just concerned that the world was going to end by the flash of an atomic bomb. He knew it. And he was certain that if we did not figure out a way to get along, then that was going to be the fate of humanity. Hibaksha is someone who was exposed to the atomic bombs or radiation. These survivors are dying. Your grandfather's plan was beautiful. I was hit on the road, maybe over there. I was hit in the wrong over there. It's really hard to look at a survivor in their eyes and tell them I don't feel bad about what my country did to them. I can't look at this in a political way. I can't look at this as an American and them as Japanese. I'm just looking at what people have done to each other. I'm looking at what we brought ourselves to and how I'm wondering if I could bring myself to that point where I'm standing behind the stokes of a gun and I'm shooting at my enemy or I'm sitting in an airplane 32,000 feet in the air and I'm going to drop a device that's supposedly going to end the war. I understand there are people who suffered by the hands of the Japanese and they use that as the defense for why the atomic bombs were dropped. I understand that there are people who were on mainland Japan waiting for the invasion, getting ready for their battle that was supposed to happen on August 7th that was canceled because of the atomic bombs. I don't know how many lives were saved. That's not why I'm here. The reason why I'm doing this is because I genuinely believe that the day we forget about what happened in Hiroshima and Nagasaki is the day we risk it happening again. What I think the survivors want isn't an apology. I don't think the words, I'm sorry, are going to be comforting. What they want is a world without nuclear weapons. Part of my work has let me meet Japanese students. I, of course, encourage you to look at the histories of the atomic bomb survivors. What to me is important is that we learn from the events that happened, we listen to the survivors of those events, and we make sure that the same circumstances are not repeated. If you look at what's happening today, we're starting to see a repetition, a move towards nationalism, a move to harsher rhetoric. It's dangerous. What do you think will change it? I think what's going to happen is you're going to see more young people involved. And I hope that's what's going to happen. There's a, there's a, a word I learned today called den shosha, den shosha. It's somebody who is inheriting the story of an older generation, an older person, to transmit that message. You could become a den shosha. I think I might be one too. <laughs>